Good morning, church. It's, uh, the month's moving on. Christmas is upon us. Uh, today we're going we'll, uh, to uh, do things a little different, I guess, than we normally do. But uh, I hope that those of you who are watching are anticipating God to do something today uh, in your life. Uh, to someone here today that's watching that's maybe not a member of this church, maybe something today that will be said or done, Lord, will just touch your heart. Maybe, you're, maybe Christmas is a lonely time for us. Maybe it's, it's a sad time of year for you. May, may you join us in our worship service, Lord, and uh, folks, and just let Jesus be Jesus in your life. Uh, we're going we're gonna, to uh, have a word of prayer, and then we're going to watch a short video on... Uh, the Lottie Moon. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for allowing us to join each other in uh, technology, Lord, to reach out to folks because of the the situation of the virus. Lord, I I pray that you would would be in this, and God, everything would go like it should. You would be glorified from it, Lord. And again, those that maybe are... uh, or shut in, or sick today, still have some, some malady, whether it be the COVID or something else, Lord. We pray for their quick healing. We pray, Lord, by Christmas that we're all well and uh, doing well. Lord, thank you for all the folks that make this church uh, what it is and makes the things happen here uh, like, it, like it does. Lord, I thank you for those who you gifted us with. And uh, Lord, for our leadership our search committee, as they uh, continue to uh, seek a pastor for this church. Uh, God, just use them. And God, I pray that at at just the right time, at the right moment, that man would come on the scene and both the committee and he would recognize that Pine Tops Baptist Church is where he needs to be. And I know, God, when all that happens, good things will happen here. So, Lord, now take charge of this service. We praise you. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're just going to have a conversation directly with Dave and ignore the cameras. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, what does it mean to be Italian? Italian means to be full of life. It means to love life, to love people, to enjoy eating. It means to talk with your hands. It means, it means taking time to get to know somebody. It, it means to be a part of a family. It's more about the importance of relationship. It's more about the importance of caring about the person that you've just spent the last two or three hours with and not wanting that to end. Are your kids American or Italian? (laughs) They are not totally American and they're not totally Italian. They're a mixture of both of them. English is definitely their first language, but Italian is definitely their first culture. Cavallo, fatto di legno. Benissimo. They go to Italian schools, their friends are Italian, they, they attend church in Italian, they go play in Italian, they go to swim class in Italian, um, our neighbors, all Italian, and so they know how to, you know, be Italian in our Italian world. I think it's very important as uh, missionaries, as international workers, that we become part of the culture. We'll never truly be Italian, and that we'll never be Italian, we understand that. But it's important for us to engage and be a part of the culture. You know, we're there to love the people of Italy. And we can't love the people of Italy if we don't know the people of Italy. Why are you in Italy? We're in Italy because we love people. It's not just a calling to be there. It's truly we feel passionate about being there, about seeing them become Christ about developing relationships, about being an incarnational witness in a place that really needs uh, to know Christ in a living way. One of the, the key hallmarks of the ministry is utilizing different avenues to multiply ourselves, uh, whether it be state conventions, churches, or college students. And every summer we host about anywhere from 10 to 15, sometimes even 20 college students, and we're placing them in cities all around us. And these college students, by spending six or eight weeks there, working alongside interning these local churches, are able to share the gospel a thousand or more times. And it's getting the gospel a lot further, a lot faster, and more impactful than we ever could. What keeps you here? What keeps me here? Um, it's people like Federico, 
who we helped him plant a church a few years ago, and now he's working on a second church in a place called Spoleto. Or Eladia, who, who is seeking, who, who wants to know more about Jesus. I feel like Marco. So I walked into a pizzeria and prayed over a meal, and him and the waiters asked me, are you a believer? I said, yeah. He says, well, I am too. And encouraged them as they're part of their local church. It's about Paula, who is a fellow believer who mm -hmm. just lost her husband, who's who's struggling and, and, and needs walking beside. It's like Fabio, voilà. the owner of the gelateria that mm -hmm. we like to go to. He's, yeah, he's crazy. He's, he's, he's crazy. <laughs> who's always so happy to see us when we come in. It's about Patrizia, who who really wants to seek the Lord, but is still so enrooted with her policies and traditions. And it's, it's for Marisa, who is undergoing mm -hmm. cancer treatments, but knows that, that we pray for her daily. It's about the people. It's about caring enough about the people that we want them to know Jesus. When you have been told from the time that you're born that Jesus is not God, the Bible's corrupted, and to follow Jesus is to commit blasphemy and you're gonna be turned away from your family, that's a whole nother task. And so we're going to the tip of the spear because we're getting to people that have only heard lies of Jesus. They've heard his name, but they've been told lies about him and to reject and to not listen. What we do, it's very hard. It takes a lot of time and on a lot of sacrifice on a lot of areas. But when you see someone get it, when you see them come from darkness to light, and they literally know that their life is forever changed, and no matter what persecution or whatever happens, that they're with Christ, that they're His for eternity, that's worth it. God sees the bigger picture, or maybe Someone in our work sees one or two Muslims come to Christ after three or four years. But God takes those two or three and snowballs. We've seen Muslims hear the gospel and, and be baptized and follow and be strong lights. Christ says to pray for the Lord of the harvest because the harvest is plentiful, that the workers are few. Then Jesus tells them, now go. I think don't people, they kind of stop it. We're gonna pray for the workers, but then Jesus says, yeah, you're gonna pray for workers, but go. Revelation is guaranteeing us as well as saying, hey, all people will have representatives before the throne. We wanna see Southern Baptist love Jesus, love his word, and give sacrificially to Lottie Moon Christmas offering so that the gospel can go to the ends of the earth and even specifically to the large Muslim groups like I work with. For many weeks, our churches have been unable to have physical gatherings. But by God's mercy, the Church of Jesus Christ continues. The Southern Baptist Convention continues. For 175 years, we have pressed forward together through wars, disasters, plagues, economic downturns, and political upheavals. Our effort of proclaiming Christ around the world has never stopped. Your support, your prayers, your gifts, all of us working together as the body of Christ have kept our missionaries on the field over the decades and keeps them there now. God is at work around the world in the most amazing ways, and He is using you, your family, and your church 
to help your missionaries, our missionaries, as they move forward with the gospel. The Derbyshires partner with churches in the United States to lead mobile clinics all over Thailand, using medicine as a means to share the gospel with those who have no other access. Christ is proclaimed, disciples are made, and churches are planted. In Kenya, IMB missionary Kristen Lowry believes the very best place for a child is in a family. That is why she is working alongside National Kenyan Partners to rescue boys living on the streets, restore their lives, provide shelter, a trade, physical and spiritual nourishment, and reunite them with their families. The Worthy family has recognized the importance of investing in relationships and in Italian culture which is why they have planted their lives in Italy for the past 17 years. College students have dropped the term hard places from their vocabulary and are responding to go anywhere in the world where people don't have access to the gospel. We treasure Jesus and his gospel above all. But let us remember we are not called to hoard the gospel, but to herald it far and wide. We are not called to stockpile the gospel, but to send it forth to those yet in darkness that they may see the light of Jesus Christ and live. The season of Advent is when we prepare for the coming of Jesus. Over the past three weeks, we have focused on hope, peace, and joy. Today's focus is love, and the title of today's Advent reading is Love Living Among Us. We often live and move between the ordinary and divine, between the mundane and the mystery, forgetting to see God's love living among us. We're often too busy to recognize God's invitations to join him where he's working, causing us to miss opportunities to share the love of Christ with others. Luke records in the first chapter of his gospel that God's favor came to an ordinary girl named Mary. Her response to Gabriel's announcement was, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. She was willing to be used by God to accomplish something great. She was willing to participate in his plan in order that his amazing love would come down and live among us. This week, let's be willing for God to use us to share his love with a hurting world. Times are challenging. People all around us need the Lord. They need to experience his love. Let's think about how we can share God's love in our community as we relight the candle of hope reminds us to wait expectantly for God to keep his promises. The candle of peace, reminding us to trust that God can provide peace during each step of our journey, and the candle of joy, reminding us of the joy we find in Jesus. And then we light the candle of love, reminding us that God's love is living among us. O come, O come, Emmanuel, let us pray. Lord, help us to believe as Mary did, that you do what you say you're going to do. Help us to remember that you are always living among us, and forgive us when we forget. Please give us the courage to be used by you to share the good news with people who cross our paths. Amen. Now we'll join us as, uh, again, sing as loud as you want to today as we sing joy to the world.
Good morning, and welcome to a service that's all about the love of God. It's a topic that certainly can't be covered in one brief musical program. You probably agree it can't really be understood in a lifetime. It's so incredible. But we just want to focus all our attention this morning on God's love, how he sent his love that first Christmas in the form of a precious baby, and how the message of Christmas has always been and always will be, God loves us. Maybe you've imagined yourself in the middle of it all. I know I have. <laughs> Who might I have been that first Christmas? What would I have done? How would I have responded to a young couple needing a place to stay? To angels appearing in the midnight sky? To a baby sleeping in a manger? Imagine our innkeeper, likely middle-aged, a very busy business owner. This is someone who doesn't have time for Christmas who has their nose so far in their phone they don't notice the world turning around them. Maybe you're focused on making Christmas work for everyone else and you haven't taken a moment to truly appreciate everything around you. While the world may be in constant flux and your busy schedule is ever-changing, the Christmas story has never changed. It's a story of God saying, I love you and I know you're under a lot of pressure and sometimes you're scared that your business or your life could fall apart at any moment. I know you're worried about being a good mother or father, a good provider for your family. But as much as you care about that, I care about you. So I'm sending my son to prove it. So remember today the innkeeper, who was so busy he failed to notice the gift he was receiving. And try to take time to appreciate that the gift is still offered to all of us. I can't believe what a night this has been We've never been this busy before My rooms are all full, yet they're still coming in Why some are even sleeping on the floor Don't get me wrong, but I've had a bad day. I'm not the unemotional kind. And see that your wife is in a family way. You walk them to the stable out behind. If I had known what the evening held in store, if I had known, I would have offered to the Lord the finest rooms for Christ to call his home. I would have given all I own if I had known. What is this star that is shining so bright? How come I've never seen it before? Why does it seem like this beacon of light is reaching from the heavens to my door? If I had known what the evening held in store if I had known I would have offered to the Lord the finest room for Christ to call his home I would have given all I own if I had known if I had known what the evening held in store if I had known what I would have offered to the Lord the finest room for Christ to call his own I would have given all I own if I had known if I had only known Maybe you don't see yourself in the story at all. Like the innkeeper's wife, you're mentioned but not explored. You feel like you bring too much baggage to truly be of any help. 
that if people knew you, knew what you've done, they wouldn't want you involved at all. But that's also part of the story. Christmas is God saying, I know who you are. I know everything you've done. I just want you to know that I love you more than you'll ever be able to comprehend. There's absolutely nothing you can do that will make me stop loving you. Remember when you doubt? Remember when you wonder what God could possibly want with someone like you? That his greatest Christmas gift of his, was his son, sent to earth to save someone like you. yesterday he'll be tomorrow the beginning and the end but the angels call him Jesus born of a virgin Mary Jehovah shepherds. Outside of everything, cut off and only relying on each other, carrying their own types of baggage. Maybe you're embittered toward the season or God. Maybe things have happened to you that you feel are unfair or wrong. 
How could a God who claimed to love you let these things happen? If he loves me, he'll prove it. If you're watching or listening to this, then know that you're doing so for a reason. God knows how alone and hurt you feel. He's listening and watching and ready to comfort you, to show you his love if you give him a chance, just like those unassuming shepherds. How can we measure this love for us? Jesus was one with the Father, but he didn't cling to his crown and throne. He emptied himself and came in the form of a servant, a small helpless baby, in response to our need and obedience to the Father. He chose love over everything. Promise us that he would be a counselor, a mighty God and the Prince of Peace. He promised us that he would be a father and he would love us with a love that would not cease. Well, I tried him. And I found his promises are true. He's everything he said that he would be. The finest words I know could not begin to tell just how much Jesus really means to me. my soul ever longed for everything he promised and so much more more than amazing more than marvelous more than miraculous could ever be he's more than wonderful that's what Jesus I stand amazed to think the King of glory would come to live within the heart of man. I marvel just to know He really loves me when I think of who He is and who I am. My soul ever longed for everything he's promised and so much more, more than amazing, more than marvelous, more than miraculous could ever be. He's more than wonderful. That's 
what Jesus is to me. He's everything that my soul ever longed for, everything He's promised, and so much more, more than amazing, more than marvelous, more than miraculous could ever be. what Jesus is to me. He promised us that he would be a counselor, a mighty God and the Prince of One of the more difficult stories on the way to the manger would have been that of Joseph. Young, married to a woman who was pregnant with the Son of God, he had the most to question and challenge. Yet he supported his young wife and knew that he had his own part to play in this. Maybe you feel a bit like him. You have questions, but you're on the right track. You know that if there is a God, you don't want to die without him. But more than that, you don't want to live without him either. Knowing what's real and confronting doubts is a struggle for you. Here's what's real. Jesus was born. His birth had been predicted for centuries in dozens of different prophecies, and he fulfilled every single one of them. What's real is that he was God's son. He lived a perfect life, telling people and showing people by his kindness and his goodness and humility just how far God was willing to go to save them. His death isn't part of our story here today, but it's a very real part of his story. He died for many sins in my place and yours. He then defeated death by rising to live again. He loves you so much that he stands ready to forgive every wrong you've done. He stands ready to help you meet your deepest needs. The first step in knowing that all-encompassing love of Jesus is belief. Belief that he was sent, he lived, and he died to save you. May the faith of Joseph show you that believing is the path to a relationship with Jesus. It came upon a me that glorious song of old for angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold
one day and the sky was bright with a holy light or the place where Jesus yourself as Mary. You know you're unworthy, but you are willing. And your willingness means everything to God. Willing to live for Him and experience His love, which you know is the true gift sent in the form of Jesus. The truth is, Mary, as faithful as she was, didn't know. She had no idea how He would change the world. She only knew that He changed every part of hers and that she would never be the same. May we all seek to come to Christmas with the meek obedience of Mary, knowing that as unworthy as we see ourselves, God saw us as deserving of the greatest gift, the gift of love in Jesus Christ. your baby boy will one day walk on water Mary did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy has come
I suppose it's natural to ask ourselves how we would have responded if we'd been in Bethlehem that first Christmas night. With skepticism or indifference? With fear and doubt? Would we insist we couldn't play our part well? Would we simply tell God we'd trust Him and follow one step at a time? The more important question is how we'll respond to God's love now. He sees you here. He knows what makes you laugh and what brings you to tears. He loves you more than you will ever know. And you may never fully understand his love, but this Christmas, what he wants for you to believe, it's real and receive it by faith into your heart and life. And from all of us at Pine Tops Baptist Church, Merry Christmas. Well, folks, I hope you've enjoyed the, the, the young people's play today. I hope you've seen some familiar stories maybe uh, that these young people have brought to, to light tonight, uh, today. Uh, I just pray that uh, maybe you were one of those people. Maybe life's just not right for you. Maybe, uh, maybe you've gone through a rough time. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you really just don't feel like you're worthy of anything. I promise you, Jesus died for your sins. Maybe, you're, maybe you've been dealing with the COVID and uh, you don't feel good because of that. Uh, just lean on Jesus right now. Lean on him and touch, touch his hand. He's got hands available. Lord, maybe there's something that just seems insurmountable within life right now. Just maybe it's, maybe it's sickness, maybe it's financial, maybe it's just some, some domestic problems. I promise you that today God can take care of those issues. Would you just come as, 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 we, as we have an invitation him? And lay that at the feet of Jesus on the altar. And just cry out to him, Lord, help me. And now we'll sing a hymn of invitation. Heavenly Father, thank you tonight, uh, today, for uh, these people who have brought the simple message of the gospel to us. Thank you for those who've worked with them, and, uh, worked hard with them, and uh, even all the, the, the obstacles they have to overcome uh, because of the COVID stuff, Lord. I just uh, pray, Lord, that uh, this message, maybe not a sermon, Lord, but will strike a chord with someone, and uh, Lord... Uh, if someone has been saved today, I pray that they will make a beeline to church as soon as possible and make that public. Lord, fill us with your spirit. May we go out next week, and I know, Lord, we can't talk to folks much, but we can across the, across the grocery store throw our hands up and say, Jesus loves you. Jesus saves. And Lord, make a difference in someone else's life today. So Pine Tops Baptist Church, may we go from here, being the church of Christ, bringing the good news of Jesus at Christmas. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.